Dear Regina, my sincerest apologies for ghosting you in December. I've been utterly forlorn since witnessing all the devastation on the news that didn't affect me personally in the slightest. I've been trying to find a modicum of peace and serenity by traveling to beautiful remote locations that only a hundred years ago would take weeks, if not months, to reach. But even there, I couldn't shake off my sorrow. My despair with humanity led me towards many sapphic romances and heartbreaks, yet I was neither chastised or penalized for dating other women. It's utterly bizarre that not even 200 years ago they were still executing homosexuals in Europe and now rarely anyone seems that concerned. Despite this, I'm plagued daily by my negative thoughts. I'm in the 31st year of my life and all my siblings, parents, cousins, aunts, uncles, nieces, and nephews are all alive. I expected my parents to pressure me to settle down and start a family or force me into an arranged marriage, but to my surprise, I've been allowed to pursue my passions, which do not include motherhood. The world is crumbling around me and I cry myself to sleep every night watching TV shows and movies written and directed by some of the most brilliant minds on the planet. I can't tolerate this depravity any longer. Sincerely yours, Kristen. Hey there, losers. New Renaissance era just dropped. Lana Del Rey released a new single. I guess some of you want a little more proof. So I'm making a whole video about it. On top of that, I have been feeling a lot more optimistic and positive lately. And I don't know if that's a, a sign of me being more delusional than ever, or the fact that I might be a little more mentally healthy than I've ever been before, but I wanna transfer my optimism and my positivity to you because I don't really tend to do that on this channel and uh, I have a lot of negativity to make up for. So today I wanna dive into the creative and artistic and technological renaissance that I believe we are currently in, but I would also argue that we're living through an unprecedented mental awareness renaissance at the moment. Our understanding of human behavior is deeper than ever before, and we've also developed the pills and medication and techniques and in general tools to assist in like helping our brains. And on top of that, discussing mental health has also been way more destigmatized considering that like we were literally burning people at the stake because of certain mental illnesses in the past. So we've come a long way. Despite all of that, our collective mental health is in decline. It goes without saying that the solutions for this are not simple and it comes to really addressing this issue at a communal and societal level and also at an individual level. If you're someone that is interested in trying therapy out, today's sponsor BetterHelp is the world's largest therapy service and it's also 100% online. With BetterHelp, you can tap into a network of 25,000 licensed and experienced therapists who can help you with a wide range of issues. You can start off by answering a few questions about your needs and preferences in therapy so that you can get matched with the most suitable therapist from BetterHelp's network. You can talk to your therapist whichever way is comfortable for you, whether that's via a text, chat, phone, or video call. You're also able to message your therapist at any time and schedule your live sessions whenever that is convenient for you. If for any reason your therapist doesn't feel like the right fit for you, you can always switch to another therapist for no additional charge. With BetterHelp, you have access to professional and high quality therapy just like with your local in-office therapists, but with the added bonus of more scheduling flexibility, more affordable pricing, and a therapist that is custom picked for your needs. You can get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash Kristen Leo. I've also linked it in the description box below and a huge thank you to BetterHelp for sponsoring today's video. So here's the thing, before I get into stating my case on why I think we are at the beginning of an emerging renaissance, we definitely need to look into what the OG Renaissance was about, right? The problem with that is that I hate reading about history. <laughs> so what I did instead of hours of reading history books and doing research on a topic that I don't wanna do, <laughs> I asked chat GPT to give me a sassy and fun summary of the Renaissance, basically. So let's get, let's get into it. Oh, the Renaissance, how fabulous. <laughs> this era was a time of cultural and artistic explosion that happened in Europe from the 14th to the 17th century. It was a period of pure brilliance where the creative minds of the time shook the status quo and brought us some of the most iconic pieces of art and literature we still admire today. First things first, let's talk about the artists. Oh boy, Leonardo da Vinci, Michelangelo, and Raphael. 
Those guys were on fire. Leonardo, for example, gave us the Mona Lisa, the Vitruvian Man, and the Last Supper. Michelangelo, on the other hand, was a bit of a moody artist. I'm assuming here that moody is a code word for very gay, but oh, he was so talented. He created the Sistine Chapel ceiling where he painted over 300 figures in the Statue of David, which is considered one of the greatest works of art of all time. Let's not forget about Raphael, the charming artist who created the School of Athens, a fresco that shows the greatest thinkers of the ancient world gathered together. That fresco alone is worth the visit to the Vatican, which, you know, it looks lovely, but still doesn't convince me to ever visit the Vatican because like, I don't care about the history of men. I don't care. I don't care. And this is why we are gonna speed through this. But the Renaissance wasn't just about artists. Science was also making great strides during this time. Galileo discovered the four largest moons of Jupiter and he observed the phases of Venus, proving that the heliocentric model of the universe was correct. Johannes Kepler, on the other hand, discovered the laws of planetary motion, revolutionizing our understanding of the cosmos. But let's be real, it wasn't all sunshine and rainbows. The Renaissance was also a time of great social and political change. The feudal system was slowly disappearing and a more commercial and urbanized society was taking its place. The printing press was invented and books were becoming more accessible to the masses. And oh boy, the Protestant Reformation, which shook the power of the Catholic Church to its very core and gave us Martin Luther, John Calvin, and the whole nine yards. I don't know what this means and I don't care, it's so boring. Let's get to the juicy bits. The Renaissance was also a time of great indulgence and excess. The aristocrats were living it up, throwing lavish parties and indulging in all sorts of pleasures. They were the ultimate fashionistas, wearing the most extravagant and clothes and jewelry. They were also obsessed with beauty and they would go to great lengths to preserve their youthfulness. What does that remind me of if not like exactly this day and era? So there you have it, folks. The Renaissance and all its sassy and fabulous glory. <laughs> Let's raise a glass to this era, <laughs> which gave us so much beauty and inspiration. And let's also remember that this uh, inspirational and beautiful era excluded the majority of people. An entire gender was barred from creating art, from studying science and furthering us technologically. So let's keep that in mind. Also looking back into the turmoil that was occurring during the OG Renaissance, we can draw a few parallels with the things that are happening currently. So one of the big economical changes that was happening during that era was the decline of feudalism, which seems to me like it's mirroring the decline that we are seeing now in capitalism. It seems like with the skyrocketing of prices for basic human needs like housing, rent, property, food, electricity, power, it just seems like it's just not, just simply not working anymore. I feel like people are getting fed up as they were during the beginning of the Renaissance. And I feel like we are gonna come up with something better. We must, we can't be that stupid, right? There are many reports that we are currently in the phase of late stage capitalism. And it seems to me from an optimistic perspective, at least that if we are indeed experiencing late stage capitalism, that will only bring forward a new system that might be better. <laughs> Hopefully <laughs> it's gonna be better. During the OG Renaissance, we also saw the rise of nation states such as France, Spain, and England. These states were characterized by a strong central government, a professional army, and a unified legal system. And this led to the formation of national identities and the decline of the power of the church. Obviously, we are living in a world that is more globalized than ever before. Also from a different perspective, we can look at the internet as a huge form of unification of humanity. The internet has really brought us together like nothing ever before. The speed and the efficiency in which information is shared from people that have never had access to a voice before is unprecedented. Also during the OG Renaissance, there was a lot of war, a lot of conflict as there was before and after the Renaissance. And please do not make me talk about it. This is so boring to me. There are not enough sponsors in this world that could sponsor this video and pay me enough to sit and talk about the wars that were occurring during that time. Do your own research, please. Art was obviously the trademark of the original Renaissance. And 
I feel like we cannot be talking about experiencing a current renaissance if we don't delve deep into what art is now because it is significantly different than what it was during the original renaissance and it is so much better. It annoys me so much when people complain about the degeneration of art. Us, the, the peons, the plebs, the peasants have never been able to experience this much art ever. Some of the art forms that did not exist during the original Renaissance that we all get to experience today are things like photography, film, and TV shows. Never before have we had access to this many stories, this many movies, this much visual art and storytelling. We have music now which has extended to far more genres than the ones that existed during the original renaissance and on top of that our ability to consume music has been way more democratized it is truly magical and miraculous that at a press of a button we have access to the world's greatest music and movies and tv shows and photos and we're bitching about it i feel like people that regurgitate this opinion are either just incredibly full of themselves and probably need to pull their head out of their ass. But also this concept really ignores the fact that back then the only people that had access to creating art were predominantly men. Art historically has almost exclusively been to serve the male gaze and from the male perspective. This is the first time in human history where a significant number of women of all societal classes have had access to create art, to share their experiences with the world. And we cannot minimize how significant this is. Here are some examples of the multitude of restrictions that women had to face. Until the late 19th century, women were not allowed to study at the École des Beaux Arts in Paris, which was one of the most prestigious art academies in Europe. Women were also often denied access to life drawing classes, which were considered essential for learning to draw the human figure because they were not allowed to witness the naked human body. And that also made it difficult for women to develop their technical skills as artists. The Royal Academy of Arts in London did not admit women as full members until 1922. And even then they were subject to strict quotas. Women's art was often relegated to women's exhibitions, which were seen as less prestigious and received less critical attention. Museums and art galleries often collected and displayed art that reflected the tastes and interests of male collectors and curators, and this meant that women's art was often excluded or undervalued. The American painter Mary Cassatt was repeatedly rejected by the Salon, the official art exhibition in Paris, despite her skill and talent. The Mexican artist Frida Kahlo was often overshadowed by her husband, the painter Diego Rivera, despite her groundbreaking work. Another form of art that we have now is digital art, whether it's digital illustrations, graphic design, video games, YouTube videos, TikToks. Should we also get into the fashion during the Renaissance, compare it to modern fashion for a minute? I don't know why I'm asking you, you don't have a choice. Some of the most defining features of that era included rich fabrics like silk, velvet, brocade. These fabrics were often adorned with intricate embroidery or woven with gold or silver threads. Puffed sleeves were also pretty big back then. I have to say as a small shouldered person, I like it. I like. Corsets, corsets were also worn a lot during that time by both men and women. Also, women's clothing often featured elaborate skirts that were supported by farthingales, which was a type of petticoat or hoop skirts, which gave the skirt a more full and rounded shape. One thing that I find really interesting about the OG Renaissance fashion was that it was extremely feminine based on what we consider feminine fashion now. It was actually a lot more progressive considering that men currently face a lot more scrutiny for dressing femininely compared to back then where they were dressing exclusively in a feminine way. It does seem though like we are on a trajectory where men are embracing femininity in the way that they dress and style themselves. And we're seeing that with a lot of men wearing skirts on the red carpet, painted nails, crop tops. I was just watching Perfect Match and the, the amount of crop tops that I saw on dudes <laughs> was amazing. Fashion 
is now experiencing a phase where everything is in style all at once. So I can't really say that we are seeing a revival of Renaissance fashion. In my opinion, as someone who has been speaking about sustainable fashion and critiquing fast fashion for almost a decade now at this point, from my perspective, it seems like fashion has never degenerated to this level ever before. We are truly experiencing the darkest dark ages of fashion, and maybe I should make a specific video about that. But when you go on any fast fashion website or brick and mortar store, the clothing at this point has reached horrifying low qualities. So much of the trendier pieces are horrendous. It's literally like I'm seeing Halloween costumes for sale for you to wear every day. And I don't know how people's taste has degenerated to the point where they see that stuff and they're like, oh yeah, that looks good. I want to wear that. And don't come for me and be like, Kristen, what you're saying is classist because thrift stores have plenty of very affordable things. And even the people back then that experienced far more horrendous forms of poverty still dressed themselves in high quality garments, still had the ability to wear high quality, durable clothes. And you can't, you just cannot convince me that any of this happening right now has anything to do with class and money. It's a hundred percent about consumer culture. People have simply lost all appreciation for garment craftsmanship, for quality, for durability. People are spending a lot of money just to haul and hoard low quality clothes that are gonna be worn one time for Instagram or TikTok and then tossed away. People have completely lost their taste. They're willing to dress themselves in literal garbage. They do not understand when they're holding a piece of plastic and feeling the unpleasant feeling in their hands, wearing it, seeing in the mirror how it looks like a low quality Halloween costume, you are literally wrapped in cellophane. And the fact that people are so disconnected with garment craftsmanship and quality that they look at those garbage clothes on them and think that that looks cute, it blows my mind. <laughs> All of this has to do with consumer culture and people being brainwashed into the cult of fast fashion. It has nothing to do with money. Clothing is an investment. We should not treat it like fast food. Rant over, uh, but there is a positive in all of this because thanks to thrifting and vintage stores and in general, the ability now for us to sell our clothes online, people have a lot more access to very high quality uh, clothes for pretty low prices. And what I'm personally seeing is that us, the peasants, have more access to high quality garments than we've ever had before. I mean, I have found high fashion, luxury, super high quality clothes at the thrift store for nothing. I have a pretty significant collection of just beautiful silk blouses and just expensive, luxurious materials that during the Renaissance era, I would have not personally been able to afford in the class that I have been born in. And we are seeing people really diving into their personal style, exploring how to express themselves through clothes in a way that has never been as liberated as it is now. And of course, on top of that, we are way less conservative with the way that we dress compared to the Renaissance era. Like we can show our ankles, we can show our knees, we can wear short skirts, we can wear crop tops, and we can do all that without risking being crucified or burned at the stake by the church. Although there are a few conservatives out there that would really like that to happen. Uh, moving on. And as I mentioned, the Renaissance was defined by significant advancements in science. And I feel like we can all see that that is happening now too. I mean, the first part of the script for this video was literally written by an AI. Technology has advanced to the point where I can ask a machine to be sassy and funny and it will deliver other than artificial intelligence. We have the internet advancements in robotics, in biotechnology, gene editing, and my favorite, which is 
renewable energy, and sustainable technologies. Our oil and carbon-based civilization is extremely primitive and it's very nice to see that we are moving forward towards more green energy. My sister works in the field of renewable energy and things seem to be going pretty well. So I'm optimistic when it comes to that. I don't know if by the time we become fully sustainable and based on renewable resources, if it's gonna be too late, but I'm hoping not. We need to be optimistic and delusional about this, otherwise we're fucking screwed, okay? Uh, moving on. And then finally we have AI, which for me personally, I feel like it's necessary to make a video exclusively delving into the positives and the negatives about this technology because there's so much to say, so much to explore, and it's so new and fascinating. When it comes to AI-generated art, for me personally, my first thought is like, could it take my job? <laughs> could, there, could we see a future where there are literal AI-generated YouTubers and an AI generated background speaking about AI generated topics that are highly clickbaity, personalized to the individual viewer. And how will that affect me? Because it is going to happen eventually. I think for me personally, I can now use AI to assist me with creating content. And that's pretty awesome because it helps me save a lot of time because I can have the AI write a lot of things for me and then I can edit it and of course fact check it because it's not 100% dependable. But I would be lying if I didn't say that I was at least a little bit concerned. I think there's gonna be a huge number of people that are gonna wanna consume exclusively AI generated content. I do not know when AI is gonna really reach the point where it's gonna appeal to people that are interested in a actual human's individual opinion on things. If AI really advances to the point where I'm suspecting in maybe 10, 20 years down the line, maybe I and people like me are not really gonna lose our jobs to AI. Instead, I'm gonna be able to use AI to auto-generate a video using my face from this age instead of what I'm gonna look like 20 years from now, which means I won't have to worry about people judging me for aging on camera, scrutinizing me as a woman that has wrinkles or white hair. I'm gonna be able to skip all of that and just remain eternally 31 years old because I'll be able to use AI to just consume all of my previous videos and auto-generate an image of myself. And I could also use AI to consume all my previous videos and auto-generate more opinions that I would personally have and auto-generate video ideas. Um, and then I would just have to filter through things and basically my work would simply be editing and not actually doing all of this, which sounds pretty great, pretty interesting. And I am, I'm here for it. There's a lot of ethical issues with AI and a lot of complications when it comes to it, but I personally am very curious to see what happens. And we are just at the beginning. So do you feel like I personally achieved what I set out to do, which is make you feel more optimistic about the world and more positive about it? If you are an artist, I would love to know your experience and your point of view on this as well. Talk to me. Talk to me in the comments, please. We have not done this in a while. I am back now and I wanna talk to you. I wanna read everything that you have to say, share with me. What have you been up to for the last two months? Maybe if you have nothing else to say, I'm sure you've done something in the last two months, okay? Just leave a comment and uh, make sure to like this video, hit the notification bell, and of course, subscribe for more videos like this. And I will see you guys soon, bye.